Hey, MCA, Mr. Braun here. Um, just wanted to share a few thoughts with you guys today as we check in and just use another day. So uh, first I want to share the devotion that I had this morning. I thought it was pretty good. So again, I hope you guys are doing that every day. I hope you guys are taking time to just spend a few minutes, whether it's a few minutes, uh, five minutes, 10 minutes or whatever, just, uh, just being in the word and, and praying. So I thought I would just share what I had again today. So this little devotional is, is kind of about the kind of the power of prayer and power of persistence. Okay. So this is called bold, bold persistence. In 1953, a fledgling business called rocket chemical company and its staff of three set out to create a line of rust prevention solvents and degreasers for use in the aerospace industry. It took them 40 attempts to perfect their formula. The original secret formula for WD-40, which stands for Water Displacement 40th Attempt, and is still in use today. If you don't know what WD-40 is, I'd suggest you ask your dad. They probably know. Pretty good stuff. What a story of persistence. The Gospel of Matthew records another story of bold persistence. A Canaanite woman had a daughter who was possessed by a demon. She had no hope for her daughter until she heard that Jesus was in the region. This desperate woman came to Jesus with her need because she believed he could help her. She cried out to him, even though everything and everybody seemed to be against her. Race, religious background, gender, the disciple, Satan, and seemingly even Jesus. Despite all these obstacles, she did not give up. With bold persistence, she pushed her way through the dark corridors of difficulty, desperate need, and rejection. The result? Jesus commanded her, commended her for her faith and healed her daughter. We too are invited to approach Jesus with bold persistence. As we keep asking, seeking, and knocking, we will find grace and mercy in our time of need. Something happens when we pray, take our place in there and stay, wrestle on till break of day, ever let us continue to pray. Persistence in prayer pleases God. And I thought that was a, a good word, a good word for today. Okay? So... I thought I would share with you guys, uh, you all know what you should be doing on RenWeb, uh, whether it's reading in the book, answering some assessments, answering some review questions, anything like that. Again, email me, try to get a hold of me if you have any questions, but all that's pretty self-explanatory. If you have any issues with it, though, just feel free to reach out to me, okay, guys? Uh, so that's, what, that's not what we're going to talk about today. What I want to share with you guys today, though, and I got this really cool... Uh, new board. I can maybe figure out how to work. It's a really cool chalkboard for lessons like this. All right. So the lesson of the day today is written right there. Maybe you can read it already. All right. So we'll read it together. A not neat not is a not not needed. All right, that's the lesson of the day. Uh, don't care if you're in English class, history class, worldview, anything like that, uh, ancient civilization, right? This is this is my lesson of the day for you, okay? And there's a bonus because I'm going to teach you how to tie a knot. Now, there are certain knots that they call survival knots, right? They are knots that across categories that can be beneficial to know. And one of those knots is this knot I'm going to teach you today. All right, It's known as the bowline. I'm going to move this over. And then I'm going to move over here more. I think that's a little better, so you can see. So this is called a bowline. All right, now, I I love knots. Uh, when I, Before I was in, in the Marine Corps, I worked at a a summer camp, and we taught a lot of different classes. Uh, I was the one of the lead instructors for our wilderness camp, and we go like rock climbing and all that kind of stuff. So I got into knots uh, a while back, and knots were really cool. Like knots, it's just a good skill to have, a good skill to know. And I know some of you guys out there are in the Boy Scouts. I know the Boy Scouts hit knots pretty hard, but you know this is something like when I was in the Marine Corps. You know, I would just sit in my room and practice knots. It's a good thing to do. The weather's nasty out there today. It's supposed to be nasty like the next few days. So, uh, you know, spend some time 
and make some knots, right? After I teach you guys this today, if you learn it, you know, do it a hundred times and then once you can do it a hundred times, do it a hundred times with one hand. Once you can do it a hundred times with one hand, turn the lights off, try and do it a hundred more times, right? So um, one of the knots that, that is good to know is called a bowline, all right? Now, knowing me, you guys know I love history and the history of knot tying goes, goes way back. And the first time this specific knot was recorded was in the 17th century by an Englishman. And he basically recorded that a lot of the sailors and the English on the English ships would, would tie a bowline because the sail would actually rip before the knot came out or the rope broke. So it's very, it's a very strong knot. Uh, your rope is going to break before your knot breaks, which is which is good, right? Like if you're climbing or anything like that, um, you can you can have a lot of faith in this rope. But also a really nice thing about the bowline is that it's even when it's subjected to a lot of weight, you can still break the knot, right? You break the knot, as in you can loosen up the knot um, and undo it and all that kind of stuff, and you don't have to cinch down and do all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, take a pick or something and rip that thing out. Um, you're able to do it with your hands and that's, that's really good for a knot, um, especially when, you know, you want to put body weight and things on it like that. So anyways, this knot, the bow line is good for like sailing, right? If anybody sails, you probably know how to do it. Uh, it's also good for fixing to like, um, just any sort of object or anything. So like, you know, if I want to secure something, I can wrap it around, an already standing object, and I can tie my bowline that way. Um, water rescue sometimes uh, they'll tie a bowline, so you can tie it around. You can tie a bowline around yourself, right? And you can you can do certain things that way that are going to enable you to 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 get out and that kind of stuff. And it's not ideal, but it'll hold your body weight, and the knot the knot's gonna, not not going to come out on you. Okay. So, let's go ahead and I'll do my best to try to teach you guys how to tie this, okay? So, it's still recording, okay. So I have up here, so step one, you're basically take it in your left hand, okay? It looks like my right hand because I'm on, on TV. And you're just going to make a loop, okay? Try to hold it up like this. Let me throw this over my shoulder so that it's easier to see, okay? So you have your loop, right? Now, if you're a Boy Scout, you probably know how this goes, but this is called your your tail. Okay, take your tail. Rabbit comes out of its hole and around the tree. Okay, so if you can see, came up and then I went around this rope. So I'm my tail's behind it. And then the rabbit sees the hawk, jumps back into its hole. And then you just cinch it down. All right, and you can see it cinches down on the body, making a, a good knot. Okay, now remember our quote, right? Not need not is not not needed. So this isn't going to affect anything, but I do not like to leave tails on my knots, right? This is a tail. So I like to just make an overhand knot and then just dress it up. So dressing it up means, you know, cinch things down, make it nice and tight, make it nice and nice and pretty, dress it down. All right. And there you go. There's a bow line. Okay. So it cinches down on itself and it's not going to come undone, right? If, if you subject it to a lot of weight and stuff like that. All right. So my recommendation, if this doesn't quite help, look online. Um, if the steps on the board don't quite help, uh, look online and tie this 100 times, okay? Um, you can tie it the way I did it. You can put it around an object, tie it that way, put it around your waist, tie it that way, okay? But this is a good knot to know, all right? No matter whether you're camping, whether you want to get into rock climbing or anything like that. Um, you can tie this to sticks, like with shelters. You can tie this to make a um, uh, a bow 
for a fire, to start a fire. Um, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it, okay? So it's raining out, weather's bad, next few days it's going to be bad. Learn to tie a bow, tie, a bow line, all right? Tie a bow line, that's a good not to know, okay? So I think that's it for today. Thanks for checking in, guys. Uh, I hope you guys are working working hard on, on the assignments. And if you have questions, again, feel free to reach out to me, okay? We're going to get through this. We're going to be all right. In the meantime, why not pick up a new skill and learn, learn how to tie a bow, a bow line, all right? I think that's it for today, guys, okay? Ignum Farrow, keep carrying that fire, and we'll talk soon, okay? All right, bye.